Hey guys, Mr. B here, and in this video we're going to be going through the Forces in Motion Basics Virtual Lab. So I have the handout here in front of me, and um, I'm just going to read a little bit of the introduction, and then we'll click on the link and start getting going here. So it says, tugging a small toy with your dog can be a lot of fun, but it's also a great way to experiment with forces acting on an object. Forces are what scientists call the pushing and pulling on objects. In the photo at left, the boy and the dog are both applying force by pulling in opposite directions. No matter how hard we look, we can't see how strongly the dog and boy are pulling. In this activity, you will use a simulation from FET Interactive Simulations to stage competitions between different sized people to pull a cart full of candy. Unlike in real life, you will be able to see the strength and direction of the forces being applied to each object, which will help you make predictions about motion. All right, so there is a simulation web link here. Uh, I'm going to keep reading the procedure, though, and uh, we might need to click on that later. So uh, number one, it says, look at the pictures below of two people pulling on a cart of candy. Which way do you think the cart will move in each of the pictures below? Explain your predictions in the table below. Okay, so the first picture, it looks like we have, uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. There you go. So you got a big guy who's in blue and a smaller guy in red. Um, I'm going to predict that the cart will move. So say the cart will move to the left. Now I'm going to predict it's going to move to the left um, because I think that that guy being bigger is just going to be able to pull more. So, um, and I'll put that in my explanation. So let me make sure this is all in red. So I'll say um, the blue guy is bigger and I think that makes him stronger. Okay, so that's my prediction. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to finish filling out, filling out the rest of these. And I'd like you to pause the video and try and fill them out yourself. And then um, we're going to go to the simulation. So I'm going to finish filling these out too. All right, so I've finished filling out mine based on what I think is going to happen, and your predictions may be the same as mine. They might be different, but either way, I filled in my chart, uh, predicting what I think is going to happen, explaining why, and now it says, go to Forces and Motion Basics, click on Net Force to test predictions in a series of trials. Try new combinations. All right, so it's gonna, let's click on the link here, and um, I think it said to click on net force okay so that's this one so you can click on it okay cool so it looks like um we can set up our own guys here and uh and then hit go all right so let's let's take a look at the um at the first one so we have the the blue guy who's bigger and he's on the second rope so like that and we got a red guy who is smaller also on the second knot so basically just like this and let's hit go okay so the cart moves to the left, which um, I think in the first one, that's what I predicted. So yay, we are right. Um, and I think it's because the blue guy is bigger. And if we look at the forces here, the left force is larger than the right force. So that um, is going to show that I think the, the overall force is going to go to the left. So actually up here, there's this little button, sum of forces. If we click on this, it will show us the net force. Uh, which is pointing to the left, which means that the cart's going to go to the left. So, all right, cool. So let's return this. Um, the second one now is we have a blue guy who's smaller on the left and a bigger red guy on the right. So let's let's uh, pull these guys off. Smaller blue guy, bigger red guy. Um, they're on the second knot. So, okay. Actually, you know what? Let's put the really big guy up there because why not? So... All right, um, I predicted the cart was going to the right, so let's hit play. Okay, so there we go. Moves to the right. Uh, we can even see again that the sum of forces is pointing to the right because the right force is larger than the left force. So, all right, cool. Um, so let's, again, clear this, return that, um, put these guys back. For the third one, we have the bigger blue guy who's on the third knot on the left. So third knot. And the red guy is on the second knot, but he's smaller. So like this. And I predicted the cart was going to go to the left. So let's hit play. Okay, cart moves to the left. Again, the blue uh, guy is able to pull with more force than the, the smaller red guy on the right. Um, and we have then two guys on each side of the same size on the second knot. So let's return these. And this guy was there, and that guy is, I guess it doesn't matter, that guy's there. Um, and I put the cart's going to stay in place. So let's hit go. Okay, so it looks like the cart is not going anywhere. 
Um, and I said because I thought that both guys are the same size, that they'll pull with the same amount of force, and uh, it won't go anywhere. And if we look at the forces here, they're the same size. So our net force is zero, which means it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and the last one, you have guys of the same size, but one's on the first knot, the other one's on the last knot. So first one is here, and the other one's there. Um, and I put that they're going to be in the same, it's, the cart's going to stay in place. It won't go anywhere still. Um, so it said go. All right, and we get the same thing. So it looks like it doesn't matter if you are close to the cart or far away from the cart. It only matters how big the guys are. So, all right, cool. Uh, so it says, compare the predictions you made above to what happens with the cart of candy in each trial. If some of your predictions are not right, correct them. Um, well, all the predictions I made were correct, so I didn't have to correct any. But if you made some predictions and they were not right, um, pause the video right now and go make any corrections on what happened for these. All right, number four, look at your table. What are some rules that you can use to make predictions about which way the cart will move? You might ask yourself questions like, does it matter that the people are red or blue? Um, so based on what we just did, I don't think it mattered if they were red or blue. I think it only mattered how big they were. So we'll say, no, it did not matter if they were red or blue. Um, letter B, does a large person always win in each competition? Provide evidence to support your answer. Um, so looking at these ones, um, and all the ones where there was a larger guy on one side than the other side, yeah, it seemed like the cart was going to move in his direction. So um, does a large person always win? Yes. A larger person always wins in each competition. Um, this can be seen in, so let's see, we had uh, first trial, second trial, third trial, where there's a bigger guy on one of the two sides. So you can say this can be seen in trials one through three, where we had a larger guy and, um, oh, all right, that's fine, whatever. I don't know why it's over there, but anyway. Um, in trials one through three, there's a bigger guy on one side, and that side always seemed to win, so... Um, letter C, if two people are pulling on opposite sides, does the cart always stay still? Uh, no, obviously we had two people pulling on each side for a lot of these and the cart only stayed still in two of them when these two guys were equal size. So we'll say, um, uh, no, the cart will only stay still if the two people are the same size on opposite sides of the cart. Part D, does it matter what part of the rope a person holds? Provide evidence to support your answer. Um, so based on what we did, I don't think it matters where they hold the rope um, because like this one here where we had two guys of the same size pulling on the same knot, like they're both on the second knot, it didn't go anywhere. And then when you put the red, the blue guy on the first knot and the red guy on the last knot, the cart still didn't go anywhere. So I think the only thing that matters is how big the person is. I don't think it matters where on the rope they're pulling. So we'll say, um, no, it does not matter what part of the rope the person holds. And then letter E, how does the sum of forces button help you? So I turned the, force, the, the sum of forces button on and I think what that does is it will tell us what the net force is. So basically what it does is it helps us to determine which direction the cart's gonna go. So when there's no sum, right, the sum is zero, the cart doesn't go anywhere. However, as soon as we add more force and the sum becomes pointing in one direction, the cart starts to move that direction. The sum of forces button helps us by determining which direction the cart is going to move. Okay, I think that's what we wanna put down. So let's say, the sum of forces button helps us to determine which direction the cart is going to move in. All right. So second part here, it says, for the explanation, more on forces. Try using the motion tab on the forces in motion basic simulator. Okay, so let's click on this again. Let's close the other tab. So now we want to click on the motion tab. 
All right, try using the motion tab. So motion, okay, let's click on that. All right, we got a guy with a skateboard and a big crate and some stuff down here. Uh, it says, explore the impact of mass on the speed of a pushed object, such as a refrigerator, crate, or person. So it says, number one, what happens to the crate when you use the person to push it? Push with 25 newtons of force. All right, so we have our guy. Um, down here, we can adjust this little slider. So let's um, set this to 25. Oh, I guess, can we set it? Oh, there we go, okay. Let's set it this way, I guess. So 25 newtons of force. It looks like the cart starts to move in the direction we're pushing, okay? Um, there's some other things up here. Let's just turn these on just to see what happens. Okay, so the cart's moving. Now, here's something interesting. We notice that the speed is actually increasing. So it's not even that, that the cart's moving, but that it's accelerating too. So that's something to make note of. All right, so let's pause this. Um, so let's just answer this here real quick. So it says, what happens to the crate when you use the person to push it? Um, the crate starts to move in the direction we are pushing, okay? Um, number two, what is different if the person pushes more? So it says increase to 50 newtons of force. All right, so what happens if we push more uh, with more force? So right now we're at 25. So let's maybe reset this and let's um, go to 50. Oh, there we go, let's go to 50. Okay, so it looks like the car's just moving. Now maybe it's too hard to see when we do that. So actually, let's do this. Let's turn all this on. Let's go to 25 first, and then let's go up to 50. So let's go to 25. Okay, let's just observe for a second. Okay, so objects, uh, speed is increasing. Okay, so now let's go up to 50. All right, so one thing I noticed right away is the speed here is going up faster when we're pushing with 50 Newtons, whereas before it was going up kind of slower when we were only pushing with 25. So I think the main thing I notice here is when we push with more force, the object accelerates at a faster rate or the speed is going up faster. So let's say that. So let's say um, if the person pushes with more force, the object accelerates at a at a faster rate. That was the main difference I saw. Um, you try it on yours and see if you see the same thing. All right, number three. What do you notice if the person pushes against the crate opposite to the direction that the crate is moving? All right, so um, let's hit play. So the crate is going to the right. And now let's apply a force in the opposite direction at 50 Newtons. So let's do this. All right, so immediately we see that the object speed is now decreasing. So it's slowing down, it's decelerating. So it seems like if we push against the object's motion, right? It was moving to the right, but now we're pushing to the left. The object begins to slow down or decelerate. I would assume that eventually it will come to a stop. And then after it comes to a stop, maybe it starts going to the left or to the left, I guess. Um, so let's see here. This comes to a stop. Ah, okay, now it starts to accelerate, but now to the left. All right, so interesting. So it seems like when you push opposite of the direction of motion, so if the cart's going to the left or the right and you push against it, it will eventually come to a stop and then from there it will start to accelerate in the direction you're pushing. All right, so we're gonna put that down. So we'll say um, the cart starts to, oh, stops, starts to slow down until it eventually comes to a stop, but then it begins accelerating in the direction that the person is pushing. All right, um, number four, compare pushing one crate to pushing two crates what differences and similarities do you notice? All right, so let's reset this again. Uh, turn our values on. So we have one crate before. So let's just go, let's just go to 50. So let's go 50 newtons. Let's just push. Okay, let's just see what happens. So, all right, it's accelerating. Uh, we see the speed here. Okay. So now let's grab a second crate and just put it on top and just let's just see what happens. Um, boom. Ah, okay, so here's what I noticed. The speed slowed down. 
So like the, the objects are still accelerating, but now it's doing so at a, at a slower rate, right? So if we remove this crate, watch the speed here. So, you, so see how quickly the speed is increasing with only one crate, but now if you put two crates, it slows down by quite a bit. So I think that the major thing that we're noticing is that by adding two crates, we are causing the objects to accelerate at a slower rate than when we only have one crate. So we're gonna put that down. So we'll say um, by pushing, or by, by having two crates rather than one, the crates accelerate at a much slower rate than with only one crate. So it seems like the more mass we have, the slower the object accelerates. And then number five says, try some of the other objects like the girl or the man, describe a few things you discovered and new things you learned. Okay, so I'm not gonna do this part, but for you, I'd like you to um, just kind of mess around with it, right? So you hit reset, turn these values on, maybe throw like a guy on there, maybe take the crate off, you know, throw the girl on top or whatever, and you know, just try pushing around and just kind of see what things you learn, what things you happen, um, and then write those things down here, so. All right, guys, that is it for this virtual lab. Thanks for sticking with me. If you have any other questions, please let me know, either through email or maybe uh, in class. But uh, yeah, that's it for this one. So see you in the next one.